Hey guys, come join us. Good hey. afternoon, everybody. Whoa, look out. Oh, right in the city, and it's kind gotta of loud watch, out here. Got to watch those stop signs. <laughs> Give you guys a couple seconds to join us. <laughs> Somebody been... has to stop at the stop sign. <laughs> yeah, someone. <laughs> so it's been a couple weeks because we had a big move. Yes, we did. We moved Very down here move. to the historic district to be yeah. closer to the action, to better serve our tour patrons and and get around town and cover all the things that we find to be pretty amazing, new, interesting, old, history. I mean, it just covers the whole gamut. And we're here covering today. Can, can't really see because it's in the shade, but we are at the, the tomb of Lord Fairfax, which is, if you didn't know, is kind of right in the middle of the city. It is. <laughs> Outside. It is. We yeah. were just talking to a couple of gentlemen who looked like they were veterans of the area who said his, he was formerly located somewhere down on Loudon Street, but they he didn't know where. Actually. He wasn't? <laughs> I was just, we were just having he that conversation. We love, you know, just step up. If you're... So he's technically been moved three times. Yeah. So he was in the original stone church under the chancel. And then when they built the new church, he was interred inside. And then in 1925, they decided to move him outside. I guess he needed some fresh air. <laughs> And this is a lovely place. It is great buildings, great architecture. Gorgeous. It's a gorgeous day. Yeah, so. and there is a big stone inscription on top, so you can come down and read it. And we're basically on the corner of Muscowan and Washington. We're between um, Braddock and Washington. So this is the Christ Church. And Anthony's notes are flying away. <laughs> <laughs> but we want to tell you some fun stuff because, you know, Anthony always brings up the no one cares about you guys well some people do but I don't memorize them I just want to know the fun stuff so there's some really cool stuff about Lord Fairfax I do have to say he um, was a slave owner unfortunately but we're not going to cover that stuff you guys he did have a big impact in not only our area but all of Virginia and even West Virginia um, so <laughs> Sorry, should have brought some. There. I should have brought some tape with me. <laughs> okay, first of all, he was the first employer of George Washington. He was who hired George Washington in Winchester as a surveyor. I did not know that, and we learn about George Washington all the time. I had no idea that he was the first. Yeah, actually, not only was he his employer, he was George Washington's mentor, yes. friend, uh, and and Lord Fairfax had a huge influence on George. Did so much so that GW wanted to be like Lord Fairfax yep. and be a wealthy landowner. And when that did not happen, and the crown decided they were not going to give him his commission, um, that's when he that's, began to rebel. That's when he began to rebel, and that's why we're here in America because of all that. <laughs> so, how interesting is that? People don't think, oh, you know, what did make GW change? You know, he was English. Um, yeah, so that was like the whole start of everything in the 1770s. That's crazy. Yeah, so if you've been on the tour, and now even if you haven't, because we'll tell you a little bit uh, of the town of Winchester's history, uh, the town of Winchester, prior to it becoming so, uh, was formerly the uh, uh, Frederickstown. And t the town of Winchester was born in 1744 and officially chartered in 1752 <laughs> when Lord Thomas Fairfax, who lies behind us, uh, the six Baron Fairfax of Cameron conveyed a large swath of land to Colonel James Wood. And from the original 1,300 acres of land that Wood got, we carved out the original town of Winchester, the plot that would become the town of Winchester. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah, we forgot to go into... Uh, I forgot to turn <laughs> What is it? Airplane, airplane mode. So, sorry about that. Um, but the interesting thing that I learned that I did not know is that the original land actually came... So, you know Culpeper, Virginia. Um, it was actually the Culpeper family land, and that was from his mother's side. They were the Culpepers. So, I always think of everything kind of going down from male family to male family, but the mother, Lord Fairfax's mom, was actually the big land family and it was passed down from them. So. Yeah, and so the, convey the conveyance that went to Wood was part of what uh, is known as, I'll check my notes here, uh, what was called Lord Fairfax's Northern Neck property. And it was an expansive land holding that comprised approximately 5 million acres. I think it was 5.2 million yeah. acres. And that covered an uh, area that lay between uh, the Rappahannock and Potomac Rivers up from the Chesapeake Bay and extended all the way to the Blue Ridge Mountains. So he took up 
his land holdings were approximately one quarter of the entire state of Yeah, Missouri. and it actually started up in West Virginia. So there was whole um, court cases about boundary lines between Maryland and Virginia. So there is a stone in West Virginia that marks the top of it called the Fairfax Stone. And the interesting thing is, you know, back then when they did surveys, things were marked by like a random stone in the woods or a yeah. tree, you know, stuff that could disappear. And it did disappear. Um, so it's actually been replaced six times. And the current one that is there was dedicated in 1957. And it's about uh, six tons. So good luck stealing that stone, you guys. Um, <laughs> but it is actually... Somebody will try. Someone's going to try. But it is actually the current boundary between three counties in West Virginia. So a, still a natural piece of rock is being used as boundaries so very interesting survey history and do check uh i have uh prepared uh, pending the, the completion of this video obviously we do a write-up on the blog at tastewinchesterhistory.com and i'll have links to all kinds of additional information that isn't boring textbook stuff it's <laughs> you can hike to that rock. it's not gotta do that. that's true <laughs> and um it, really interesting not terribly long reads and uh, as Misty was talking about the surveys and the maps, there's a lot of really uh, graphics of historical maps that uh, talk about all the surveys that were done and the, and the uh, Fairfax stones and all that, all those markings that were yeah. done. So it's really, really, if you're, if you're even a little bit into history, uh, it was like going down a rabbit hole for me. Once I started doing the research, I'm like, oh, this is so, so interesting. Yeah, I just really never knew how he really tied into the whole revolution, which was pretty cool like I didn't you know you don't think what made people decide things back then you know right so well, well you know what I'm learning is that his impact his impact on the region most people most famous people in the area particularly in the area have their names attached to one sure. or multiple things but to yeah, say that cities, his streets, I mean, you know, buildings and yeah. his impact on not only Winchester and Frederick County and Clark County and a bunch of other counties, you know, you talked about it being his, his territory comprised, don't hold me to the numbers, like 14 Virginia counties or 16 Virginia counties and seven uh, West Virginia counties as we know them today. So uh, to say that his impact on the region and colonial America was substantial would probably be a little bit of an understatement. Yeah, it really is. And he was the only, and I can't think of the term, but he was like one of the only like with that title that ever lived in America. Ah, uh, yes. What was it? I forgot. <laughs> the only English titled nobleman to ever live yes. in, live, reside permanently. In colonial America. In colonial America. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I would have thought there would have been a lot more. <laughs> nope. He was the only nobleman to come over and yeah. actually relocate. And here. then he had to kind of, you know, not say anything mean once uh, the colonies won the war. Yeah, <laughs> And he of was course. still here. <laughs> Yeah, so he when he came when he came to Virginia in uh, around 1735, he moved to the Shenandoah Valley in around 1747. I got my cheat sheet. I always need my cheat sheet for my dates. He eventually lived in Greenway Court in what is present day Clark County, where he managed all of that vast land holding. And some people say that he is the one that placed the White Post in White Post. There's very conflicting mm -hmm. stories about that, but he is one of the people that they say put it there and it was supposed to point to green white court that was his yeah the other interesting thing um and, and this might be good for a scavenger hunt somewhere down the road is i was reading some comments on some of the source material uh, source websites that uh, i had used to uh, prepare for today's uh, video about there being fairfax a uh, fairfax sundial and i believe it was leeds england and there is also some lore that uh, there was a a uh, Fairfax sundial somewhere in that area of White Post uh, that has there yet to be was. uncovered. There used to be a lot, and there is a website that I've looked at that there are still sundials around, like, and they haven't been pointed by yeah, so GPS might, and stuff. Like, yeah, we might need yeah. to look into that. Have to see that. So there you go, guys. That is a little brief history on Lord Fairfax and kind of everything that he did for us. Um, so you can come visit him, and he is on all the. Um, historic literature about the area and all the historic walking tours that you can do and it's literally a block and a half off of the walking mall so next time you're down here come over and see it it's a nice little 
shaded area, quiet over here, except for all the cars going by. Sorry about that. And us making a lot of noise while we're doing this video. For all you people also who either... This comes a big we'll barn this down truck, the road. <laughs> this truck towing a building passes by here. Um, so uh, for those of you who either visit or pass through Clark County a lot, or live in Clark County especially, you know, Greenway Court's still down there, and the property on which Lord Fairfax's estate uh, at Greenway Court, uh, it was situated approximately uh, a mile from White Post. So uh, while his, while his home doesn't currently uh, exist, um, the, uh, the hunting lodge, his, he had original hunting lodge on that property, still stands down there, and it's near Route, to, uh, Route Let's try that again. Route 277 there you go. in Clark yeah, County. He never ended up building like Coast. a big palatial mansion as he planned. Yeah. Um, so that did happen, but that is still there. So there you go, guys. So we will be back next week, and I'm hoping we're going to be in a historic home. I'm going to get that on the calendar. And then we have a couple of Tasting Tuesdays with food coming up as well. So we are back. We'll be here every week. And, of course, you can join us on a food tour, although not this week we are booked. Um, but your tour is open, and uh, I think we don't have any other weekends that we're not doing any so far this summer. So, so far. join us. We also have a progressive dinner coming, and if we can get it all together, a big Taste Winchester Festival where you can get lots of tastings all in one day. Fantastic. Awesome. Okay, guys, comment if you come and watch us, and let us know if you've been to the tomb and where else we should go to. And you'll see all of our source material. You can book tours, tastewinchesterhistory.com. Uh, we'll get this uh, blog post up a little bit later, as uh, soon as we get home, pretty much. And okay, uh, we'll talk to you later. We'll see you. Bye. Take care.